love running. I love running. So we're going to touch on three basic principles today very briefly, open it up for some questions, and after that I basically just want to cut you guys loose on our retailers today. They know as much about their product uh, as anybody does. But let's talk three simple principles today. If any of you were here last week, you heard Michael Sandler talk, you came to realize, like I have over many years, barefoot is the gold standard. Now obviously we can't be barefoot for our entire lives. There's, there's times and areas where we're gonna to need to put on a shoe, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. When you look down at your barefoot, there's three things that should become apparent to you and very clear to you uh, that will guide your shoe buying process. And that is, if you look at your barefoot, you'll notice that your heel bone, your calcaneus, is always going to be level with all of your toe bones, and that's 14 of them. So when you're looking for shoes, you're going to be looking for a shoe that also positions your foot just as if it were barefoot. So as the industry has evolved, the terminology has also changed. When I used to start talking about this, I would just say, get a flat shoe that's wide at the ends of the toes and flexible. These days, our retailers would tell you that the terminology is becoming things like zero drop and how much of a differential and so forth. And all these terms are synonymous. Uh, so basically, we're looking at three things today. We really do want a shoe that's, you can either call it zero drop or you can call it flat. And what that means is that there is no differential from the heel to the forefoot. I'm gonna borrow this shoe here. So this particular shoe would have a little bit of an elevated heel, uh, maybe six to eight millimeters above the forefoot. So uh, this shoe would not be entirely zero drop and that's one of the critical features that you're gonna to wanna to look for. The other thing that's pretty important is if you notice your bare foot, your toes are on the ground. So for years, if you'd gone into the running shoe stores, you would have seen most of the shoes on the shelf, including the shoe that Michael borrowed from you last time, your Mizuno shoe that had a tremendous amount of what's called toe spring. So as you begin thinking about your shoe buying process, you're gonna wonder why in the world is it that a lot of the shoes out there suppose that your foot is gonna function better when your toes are like this. That's something I would encourage all of you to avoid. If you want to dig into the science of this, there's four articles on our website written by Dr. William Rossi, and he talks about the principles that we're going to talk about today. There's also an article on our website that you guys might be surprised to find out was published in 1905. And that article talked about this. That article couldn't figure out why people who wear shoes with big toe springs and a lot of heel end up getting what Sanatan and I see in our office all day, every day, which is toe tendons that are too tight. In other words, this. This is also one of the things that keeps people from barefooting successfully. Because when your toes are like this, your fat is not under the metatarsal heads or under the ball of the foot. Your fat will be here in an area called your sulcus and you'll end up running and walking on your bones. And that's a primary reason why people fail barefooting or fail minimalism. So priority number one is you're looking for a shoe that does not have a heel elevation. There's also a study on the website that shows what happens when people wear chronically elevated heels compared to people who go barefoot and go flat. They have a shortening and a thickening of their Achilles tendon fibers, which then will predispose you to injury. So avoid the heel, avoid the toe spring. Unless the shoe has a little bit of toe spring, uh, but when you put the shoe on, if the, your body weight bottoms out the toe spring, that's an acceptable toe spring. What you don't want is you don't want a shoe that's got a rigid toe spring that will hold your foot like that during your entire gait cycle. Your foot is designed to flex and extend every step you take. For the last 30 years, every runner and walker in America has been chronically extended, never getting an opportunity to flex, especially the little tiny arch muscles called intrinsic flexors. As soon as you start to get your toes flat, get them spread out, get them flexing, you start to get a strong foot. Fourth thing, I said we would talk about three, but there is a fourth thing that also plays into this. A quarter of all the bones in your body are in your foot. Your foot is your best body's adapter until you put on a stiff shoe or a stiff orthotic. And then you take away from the ability of those beautiful bones and joints to be the mobile adapters that they're supposed to be. So 
Try to go flat or zero drop. Avoid your heel, avoid your toe spring. The fourth thing, or the, yeah, the fourth thing, since the flexibility is the third thing, the fourth thing is you really want your toes to be able to spread wider than the ball of your foot. I challenge people to look at their barefoot uh, birth certificate when the nurse in the hospital stamped your foot in ink and put it on paper. I've got two young daughters. Both of my daughters be, <coughs> excuse me, were born widest at the ends of the toes and not at the ball of the foot. So my particular passion in this whole minimal barefoot spectrum is not just getting people level, getting people feeling the ground, but I also am very keen to, tr to try to help people achieve their foot being widest at the ends of the toes. Now there's people like Sonaton, there's people like Daniel Mart Martinek who occasionally comes and goes barefoot all the time, who have watched their toes spontaneously open up just by getting the tapered toe box off their foot. However, one little trick that we use in our clinic to try to accelerate this process is called Correct Toes. It's a little silicone product. Uh, Sonat Sonaton's got it at his clinic, I've got it at our clinic, FitRight has it. Uh, but the point is to not tolerate the fact that over the course of our life as Americans, we, we alter the shape of our natural foot with our footwear. And a lot of Americans are not even aware of this. A lot of Americans just assume that we look around at each other's foot, the ball of the foot's widest, that's what a foot's like. Until you travel abroad, if you go to Africa, you go to South America, or you happen to look at a lot of children's feet, you realize we actually literally change the structure of our feet over the course of our life in America. And not so surprisingly, my office is full of people coming in as a direct consequence of altering the natural shape of their foot. So, Quick little recap, try to get your heel level with the front of your foot, uh, zero drop or flat. Try to get your toes down against the support surface. Try to get your toes spread wider than the ball of the foot. And look for footwear that is flexible front to back. Torsional rigidity is something that the shoe community has appreciated in the last many years. Only now are we finding out that it, that immobilization may not be what we want for the natural healthy foot. So you want a shoe that's going to bend. This is one of my favorite shoes, Lems. Although there's plenty of good shoes out there, I'm, I'm happy with Soft Stars, I'm happy with some of the stuff that Rob's going to show you here today. Uh, so once again I want to thank our, our folks for coming out from the shoe stores and the shoe companies. Uh, I'm going to open it up for any questions that you might have and then I'm going to cut you loose on the retailers to get to learn what's new out there this year. Any questions? All right, so how can you tell how can you tell if a shoe is too big? So you can have a, a giant shoe in this style and, and it'll still be comfortable and it'll meet all those requirements. How big is too big? Yeah, that's a great question that Lori asks and I'm gonna go ahead and use this shoe again. And I'm glad you asked that, Lori, because a pertinent part of the conversation is once you find that ideal shoe, how do you fit it to your foot? Uh, the best trick that I've come across is your insole or your sock liner. Now if you came to our clinic, we would be keenly interested in helping you to get your natural foot, so we would be fitting you for correct toes, and notice now my foot's widest out here and not at the ball. If you happen to be visiting one of the retailers, we would ask you to pull the sock liner out of the shoe in the shoe store and superimpose your foot on it. Now, 90% of everybody we see at our clinic with their foot in natural position is going to fit most shoes like this, which means that if I put this shoe on with correct toes, I'm going to be pretty unhappy within a very short period of time. Ingrown toenails, nerve problems, skin issues, irritation, blisters. So what I would be ideally looking for, and there are some selections available, I would want my big toe to reside on the sock liner there. I would want my fifth toe to reside there. In other words, for my purposes, I need this sock liner to come way out here, which is why I tend to gravitate more towards this style of a toe box, as opposed to some of the pointier, prettier toe boxes, which are less likely to fit a wide variety of people. So as Rob and I were visiting before uh, we started today, we talked about a trend in the industry these days, which is to no longer include a sock liner. 
which I think is a fantastic idea because really it's excessive foam that most people don't need anyway. We take it out of the shoe, it lets the foot drop down into the deeper, wider part of the shoe. But let's just pretend you're visiting one of the retailers today, you're sharing with them their goals, and Rob hands you this shoe. There's nothing to take out. We would discourage you from just putting correct toes on, putting your foot in and seeing how it feels. So in this scenario, we would have you either put correct toes on or spread your toes, and then you would stand on the opposite sole. Now obviously this is probably a smaller woman's version, so, uh, but you get the point. I would be looking for my whole foot to be there and there, and then I would consider wearing my correct toes in this shoe and having enough room to spread out. So that is the million dollar question. I appreciate you asking it, Lori. If you're a tiny bit off of the sock liner in the store, <clears throat> just leave it out of the shoe, as I mentioned. A couple of other tricks you can do. If you've got a shoe that laces way up here over the ball of your foot, don't lace it there. Start it back a couple of eyelets. Also gonna open things up up front. And if you're like a lot of our clients, you go visit our retailers and you put your correct toes on, you still can't find anything, we offer a free community service in our clinic. We will modify the shoe for you at no charge. Because we know that if you can't get your foot positioned like that, you're never gonna be able to experience the benefits that this program has to offer. So thank, thanks for asking that, Lori. Other questions, other concerns? All right, thanks for being here. Have some time with the retailers. I love running, I love running. I love running, I love running.